A History of the Yoruba People. S. Adabanji Akindi. The Kingdoms of Yoruba Land. We will now in this chapter present a survey of the founding of the Yoruba kingdoms as made possible by the most prominent traditions. In doing so, however, we need to be mindful of the limitations in our present state of knowledge of this important theme in the history of the Yoruba people some of which limitations have been pointed out in the previous chapter. The Central Kingdoms The territories of Ife, Ijesa and Ou are regarded in this chapter as the central territories of Yoruba land. The foundation of the main kingdom of the Ife country, the Ife kingdom, has been dealt with in an earlier chapter. The other considerable kingdom in the Ife forests was Ifuara, a short distance to the southeast. Ifwara was founded, as would be remembered, probably about one century after the foundation of Ife, by a prince, Olojo Agbel, who migrated from Ila Ife after being rejected for the Ife throne. Olojo Agbel came with his large following to a group of old settlements, and these were glad to receive him as their king. His followers and the older settlers then joined hands to give him a proud kingdom, a replica of the one that had rejected him. According to Ou and Ife traditions, the first member of Odujua's large family to leave Ila Ife to found a kingdom was Olau, son of Odujua's oldest daughter. His father was a commoner, a priest in Odujua's palace. On leaving Ila Ife, he headed roughly westwards into the forests and, some distance from Ila Ife, he established, in the country of the Ou subgroup, his kingdom of Ou Ipul. The first location of this kingdom seems to have been somewhat further north of its final location where it later became famous from about the 15th century, about 60 miles west of Ila Ife. In later centuries, other princes from Ife came and established kingdoms in other parts of the Ou territory, namely the kingdoms of Ogber, Iranmu, Moo, Okolo and others. In the country of the Ijesa subgroup, immediately to the east of Ife, many kingdoms appear to have been founded from Ife. Of these, the best known are Ilesa, Emisiila, Asa, Ipatu, Otan, and Igbajo. Ilesa was the greatest from the beginning. According to Ilesa and general Yoruba traditions, the founder of Ilesa was an Ife prince named Ajibagun, also known as Abukun. One of Odujua's younger grandsons, Ajibagun is renowned in Yoruba traditions as the prince who offered to travel to the sea coast in order to fetch some quantity of sea water prescribed by the Ifa oracle for the treatment of Odujua's failing eyes, hence his other name Abokun, he who brought sea water. While he was away to the seacoast, many of his cousins had obtained blessings and emblems from Odudu and departed in various directions to found kingdoms for themselves. When Ajibagun returned from the coast, he asked for an emblem also. The grateful grandfather gave him his old war sword, the sword that he had used in many of his victorious battles, for which reason it was known as Idajus the Sword of Victory. Armed with Idajus, Ajibagun headed eastwards and soon entered into Ijesa territory. Along his way, he found some of the followers of his cousins who had left Ila Ife before him and he seized valuables from some of them. In the Ijesa forests, he first settled with his followers at a place called Igbadai, where he lived for a number of years and died. His son and successor, Okokilo, continued the migration and brought the group first to Igbo Oaluz and then to Ilawa. Okilo's successor brought the group to a large group of very old settlements known as Ilamur, which he conquered and renamed Ibokan. From Ibokan they conquered another group of settlements of which the most prominent was Alare, ruled by the Alare. With the restlessness inherited from the founder of their group, Abokun, the group continued to move. Subsequent leaders, or was, of the group are said to have ruled at Okasan, Ipol, Iwari, Ijioro, before they came to the location where they decided to make their final home that is, Ilesa in the time of the 5th or 6th Oa. When they arrived at Ilesa, there were some settlements there Akagun, ruled by the Alakagun. Ibo Siren, ruled by the Labo Siren, Igbogi, under the Shindal, Lurier, under the Olurier, Asor, ruled by Alasor, and Okesa. At the settlement named Okesa, they met an important personage, probably the ruler of Okesa, who was a very successful farmer, his main crop being Okro, Ila, from which was derived his title, Obinla. All these settlements were made to accept the leadership of the Oa and to become parts of his new city of Ilesa. The Obinla was so important in the area that he was accorded the position of second in rank to the Oa, so that his title of Obinla became the highest chieftaincy title below the Oa. Before departing from Ibokan, the Oa had given the ruler of that town the title of Ogboni of Ibokan. Ibokan's main shrine became one of the most important in the Oa's kingdom, a shrine that had to be visited by every subsequent Oa as part of his installation rituals. The Eastern Kingdoms Eastwards, the Yoruba subgroups living in the hills and forests beyond the Ijesa country were the Akiti and the Akoko. 
The Yakiti people insist in their traditions that a total of 16 kingdoms were created in their country, but even they themselves usually identify more than 16 names Adu, Ikir, Ais, Imur, Akuri, Ogotun, Ephon, Ara, Ijero, Otun, Ito, Ikol, Ishan, Oi, Itaji, Ayad, Obo, Omuo, Osi and Ayer, not usually listed today as kingdoms, seem to have been kingdoms of some stature in their early history. Some traditions have it that Osi was once a prosperous kingdom, but that it came upon disastrous times as a result of the hostility of its neighbors the Edo and Adu kingdoms. Ayer probably evolved locally from one of the groups of settlement, or Alu, existing in the Yakiti forests before the time of Odudua. Its ruler, the one Ayer, traces his ancestry to the god Ogun, a claim confirmed by traditions of all Yoruba people, among whom it is generally believed that Ayer was the original home of Ogun. The indication from all this seems to be that the god Ogun had his origin in Ayer, that the one Ayer was the high priest of Ogun, and that when the kingdom founding immigrants came from Mife and other sources to Akiti, they kept off from this group of settlements and it evolved into a kingdom. Of the avowed Akiti kingdoms, the last to be founded was Ayade. The account of the founding of this kingdom in the mid-19th century does not belong here with the accounts of the founding of the early Akiti kingdoms, but will be treated as part of the developments of 19th century Yoruba history. As analyses of their traditions and king lists seem to indicate, the early Akiti kingdoms were probably founded in the course of the 13th and 14th centuries. Various versions of Akiti traditions recorded in the early 20th century suggest that Otun was probably one of the earliest to be founded. Almost all of these older kingdoms have it in their traditions that their founders were descendants of the Odudua royal line from Ife. Some traditions recorded in Ajuifa indicate that the founders of the Ara, Oi and Ijero kingdoms were from Ife but from the bloodline of Orunla, one of the greatest personages in the early history of the Ife kingdom. In every case, when the immigrant founders of these kingdoms came into the Akiti hills, they had to contend with certain earlier settlements in order to establish their Ife type kingdoms. For instance, Adu palace traditions have it that the founder of the Adu kingdom was a prince of Ife, where he was known among the princes as Awamaro, the restless one, and Yui, the speaker, on account of his restlessness and persuasiveness. He is said to have left Ife with his older brother Ornmian and to have gone to Benin with him, leading a small group of his own. After some years, he left Benin and headed northwards with his followers until he entered the Akiti country. At Agbado he stopped for a few years, and when he wanted to continue on, the older men in his following chose to make their home at Agbado. Continuing eastwards with his younger followers, he came to Adu where he found some old settlements around the foot of the Oloda rock. The oldest of these small settlements was Ilasan, ruled by the Ilasan. The other settlements regarded Ilasan as a sort of senior settlement, and feared the Ilasan, who was believed to command enormous ritual powers as priest of the spirit of the Oloda rock, the protector spirit of the whole area. The Awamaro group settled peacefully at first and then conflicts erupted between them and the old settlements. In the last of many clashes, Awamaro overpowered his opponents, cut off the Elisan's head, and proceeded to establish his kingdom, taking the title Yui. But so influential did the Elisan's memory continue to be that each descendant of Awamaro, on being installed as the Yui of Adu, must offer obeisance at the Elisan's grave. The former rulers of the old settlements and the leaders of the Awamaro group became the high chiefs in the new kingdom and the new city of Adu comprised two broad divisions known as Odo Adu, made up of the quarters of the old settlers, and Okui, made up of the quarters of the Awamaro immigrants. Probably about a century later, a large immigrant group came from the kingdom of Ila in the Igbamana country. These were welcomed, their leader was accorded a high chieftaincy title, and a third main division to Adu city thus emerged, with the name Ila. Ila, under its sectional leader, the Alariran, was also arranged into quarters of its own. The traditions of the Akir kingdom present a unique problem. An earlier line of Akir kings, the Alukair, was at some point supplanted by another, the Ogoga. The Akir traditions have it that the founder of the Ogoga line was a famous hunter of Edo origin who resided in Akir and who used to be asked by the Alukair to attend to certain matters for him, including adjudication of disputes, because the Alukair, being also the chief priest of the spirit of the Alicinder rock, was usually too busy with state rituals. From that, Ogoga in ways that are not clearly explained in the traditions, became the king while the Alukair became entirely the high priest or ritual king. Bayer suggests that the Alukair probably represents an early immigrant wave, from Ife, which founded the Yakir kingdom, while the Ogoga represents a late immigrant wave from another source. However, a close look at the available evidence indicates that while the Alukair very probably represents an early kingdom founding immigrant group from Ife, 
The Ogoga dynasty seems to have been only the result of a purely internal change in leadership structures in the Akir kingdom rather than the arrival of new immigrants, a change which took place at a late stage in the history of the Akir kingdom, probably as late as the 17th century. The founder of the Akure kingdom, according to Akure palace traditions, was a certain Asod Boyid, a prince of Ife, who is said to have left Ife at the same time as Ornmian. At OSU in the Ijesa country, he parted with Ornmian and headed eastwards into the Akiti hills. For years, he wandered in the forests around Rnfun before he finally found his way to Akure. The main paths of the old route from Ife to the Edo country in the far southeast pass through this place, and Asod Boy Eid and his followers found in the area many small old settlements spread over a large area of forest. By pulling together the settlements in the most desirable part of the forest, notably Idapechu, Ilamo, Okaro, Ijomu, Obanla, and others, he established the new city of Akure, the royal city of his new kingdom. Identical developments took place at about the same time at the place that later became Ogotun in western Ekiti. Some of the settlements in this place, of which Arun, Igben and Isaju are the most remembered, were overpowered by an immigrant group from Ife and pulled together to form the city of Ogotun, the central city of the new kingdom of that name. At Ise in southern Ekiti, the immigrant group led by the Arunjale suppressed some earlier settlements and rulers, the most notable of whom was the Olas. As added to, the rulers of the Ise kingdom that was thus created continued afterwards to give emphasis to rituals honoring the memory of the supplanted Olas. When the founders of the Ijero kingdom came, they had to suppress some old settlements in the area in order to establish their new city and kingdom. The traditions of the Ijero area indicate that the ruler of one of the old settlements, the Oliku of Uku, somehow successfully resisted being integrated into the chieftaincy structure of the new kingdom of Ijero. The traditions have it that the Oliku wielded such great ritual powers that the Ahero, king of Ijero, more or less decided to leave him by himself even though his settlement had been destroyed. The Alaka thereafter lived as a priest in a shrine just outside the city of Ijero, under a vow that he and the Ahara must never meet or see each other. The Alaku still lives at that location. The hills of the Akoko country, immediately to the east of Akiti, are a continuation of the Akiti hills, but they are considerably more broken up and more rugged. This too is frontier country where the Akoko Yoruba, the Edo and the Afan Mai, and even faint strains of the Nup from the north, meet and often intermix. Furthermore, unlike in Akiti, there are clear signs that, in addition to early Yoruba settlers, there also lived in the Okoko Hills, as earlier pointed out, certain small groups of people speaking languages that were not Yoruba. Finally, it is obvious from Okoko traditions that their country very frequently experienced military pressure from its neighbors from the Edo, Owo and the Noop. Probably because of these conditions, kingdoms comparable in size to the neighboring Akiti kingdoms never evolved in the Okoko Hills. The traditions of the founding of the Okoko kingdoms are basically the same as of other Yoruba kingdoms. Migrants came from some distance, suppressed some older settlements and established a kingdom. Many trace their founders to Ife, but some, like Herajiti, Ishwa, Afa, Ifira, Ipim and Ipizi, trace their founders to Benin, not surprisingly the Benin royal family. The kingdoms so established had typically Yoruba monarchical structures and insignia. The Southern Kingdoms the kingdoms of southern Yoruba land inhabited the thickest forests of Yoruba land and the lagoon territories of the Atlantic coasts. In these regions live the following Yoruba subgroups, the Owo, Itsukiri, Ilohe, Ikale, Ondo, Ijebu, and Awori. The Owo lived in the extreme eastern forests of this region, close to the country of the Edo, the southeastern neighbors of the Yoruba. According to Owo and other Yoruba traditions, the kingdom named Owo was the first kingdom established in the Owo forests by an immigrant group from central Yoruba land. According to the main body of Owo palace traditions, the founder of this kingdom was a man named Asunlolo Ojugbelu, also known as Omala A, a prince of Ife. Another body of traditions from Owo and from Ajuifa traces Ojugbelu's ancestry not to the Odudua royal line but to Arunmala, one of the greatest priests in Ife in about Odudua's time. According to this version, Ojugbelu was one of Arunmila's sons, born to him in his old age, and some of Ojugbelu's brothers also founded the kingdoms of Ara, Ijero and Doi in Akiti. A local Owo historian, M. B. Ashara, dates Ojugbelu's migration from Ife to the 12th century, a date he arrived at by working backwards with the list of Oo's kings and by relating events in Oo's history to known nodal points in the history of the Benin kingdom. After leaving Ife by the old eastern route, Ojugbelu and his followers are said to have taken a less known western branch of that route, and to have therefore gone through the area of the Idenor Hills. They stopped in a number of locations on their way, at Uji and Upifa, 
both close to Idenra, hoping to settle and establish their kingdom. In each place, bad weather conditions or the intense hostility of earlier settlers compelled them to move on. South of the Idenra area, they came into extremely difficult forest country where they suffered lack of food and water. Finally, after another abortive attempt to settle at a place called Ugboa Guada, they came to a junction of paths on the old Ife Benin route and started to build their kingdom. Ojugbelu had died during the long stop at Upifa, and it was his son, Imade, who brought the group to Owo. When they arrived at this place, they found a number of small settlements, each a mini-state under its own ruler, that had long lived in the area notably Ifana, Idison, Leo, Omu, Utelu, Igbe, Upo, Okasi, Oko. At first they were well received by some of these settlements. But when they tried to assert some sort of joint authority over all the settlements, resistance developed. In the hostilities that ensued, the Amade group found three of the old settlements particularly strong and difficult to overcome. The first was Idison, headed by a ruler with the title of Alale. As priest and custodian of the much-feared Ogo deity and shrine, the Alale commanded great influence with all the old settlements. The second was the Alamu who drove Amade and his people from their first sight. And the third was the Elephana, who ruled Ifana, perhaps the largest and strongest of the old settlements. The Alale, Alamu and Elephana managed to join hands again and again, and made attempts to unify all the settlements for the fight against the immigrants. While fighting against all these hostile forces, the Amade group went on determinedly establishing their new city. Some of the old settlements got tired of the fighting and gave up, but the fighting continued for many generations and through the reigns of many Alawos. Those settlements which made friends or were vanquished, were incorporated into the new Owo state and their leaders became important chiefs in it. The one or two who proved the most irreconcilable had their leaderships totally destroyed. The city of Owo grew, though slowly and with interruptions. Around the Olawo's residence on Oke Segbo, the city took shape, each old settlement and each group among the immigrants establishing its own quarter, headed by its own chief, all acknowledging the supremacy of their king, the Olawo of Owo. The kingdom of Odetsukiri is the easternmost Yoruba kingdom on the coastal lagoons. There has been much discussion among historians concerning how and when this Yoruba people got into this part of the western delta, and how and when their monarchical institutions originated. Their own traditions about their early history have tended to focus on the creation of their monarchy and its ruling dynasty. Those traditions follow more or less completely certain Edo traditions collected and preserved in writing by the Edo historian, Jacob Egerethpa, in the early 20th century. According to these, in the reign of Obaolu of Benin, dated by Jacob Egerefba to 147,380, a Benin prince named Dijanua, having become too unpopular to hope to be accepted as king of Benin after his father, migrated with some followers into the western delta. The Itsukiri versions have it that when this prince arrived in the delta, there were small groups of Yoruba-speaking people already settled in the area where he chose to settle. The Itsukiri traditions call these earlier settlers Umale. Some of these Umali moved away, but the rest stayed and accepted Ijinua as their king, and so the kingdom of Oditsukiri came into being. Now, Umale, rendered in other Yoruba dialects as Imol or Imol, is, as would be remembered, the generic name that the Yoruba people call the earliest earth spirits and deities worshipped by all Yoruba. The small groups called Umale were almost certainly Yoruba elements worshipping, like other Yoruba people, a pantheon of earth spirits. Obaro Ikem suggests that these people accepted Ijinua as their king probably because they were impressed by the regalia of royalty that he brought with him. There might also have been additional reasons. According to Ikem, the Benin court may have been bilingual for some time after the coming of the Ife prince, that is Ornmian, and, therefore the royal party from Benin may have spoken Yoruba as well as Edo. If this was so, then a group which spoke the Yoruba language, though also speaking Edo, would be quite easy for the pre-existing Yoruba settlers to accept. The Oditsukiri kingdom that thus emerged later absorbed into itself various linguistic and cultural elements Edo, Orobo, Ijo. Nevertheless, its language has remained recognizably Yoruba proof, no doubt, of the predominance of Yoruba elements in the kingdom throughout its history. There remains the question when and how this Yoruba people arrived in this delta country. Their closest Yoruba neighbors to their west are the Ilhe, Ikale, and Ondo. Their Yoruba dialect exhibits some similarities to these neighboring dialects. They named their royal city Oditsukiri, a cultural trait that they share with other southern Yoruba subgroups among whom royal cities were called Ode, as in Ijebu Ode among the Ijebu, Odondo among the Ondo, Odai and Odairl among the Ikale. In parenthesis, among the northern and western Yoruba, royal cities were called Ila, as in Ila Ife among the Ife, Oyo Ila among the Oyo. The Itsukiri were, like the Ilahe, 
a Yoruba subgroup which formed from Yoruba elements penetrating this far to the coast as part of the general expansion of the Yoruba people beginning from Stone Age times. That expansion brought, at different times, the Awari, the coastal Ijebu, the Ikale, the Ilahe, and the Itsakiri, to the coastal lagoon country with the Ilahe and the Itsakiri settling further east than the rest, and the Itsakiri settling further east than the Ilahe. We have no definitive information concerning the chronology of Itsakiri history. The Ijenuwa tradition indicates that by the time this prince came, small Itsakiri groups lived in small, heavily ritualized, settlements similar to the small settlements common in Yoruba land before the creation of centralized kingdoms. What we seem to have in the Itsakiri case, therefore, is the Itsakiri version of the nearly universal Yoruba experience a bunch of small local settlements upon which a centralizing group came, resulting in the creation of a centralized city and kingdom. Alagua suggests that this Oditsakiri kingdom was already in existence before the first Europeans came to the Delta coast. His thesis is that when the first Europeans came looking to trade in the western delta in the last years of the 15th century, they naturally sought to trade in places where there were already authorities well established to see to the proper management of the trade. They focused, therefore, on Guado in the Benin kingdom, and on the Oditsakiri kingdom. We can safely say, then, that the Oditsakiri kingdom had been created some considerable time before 1500. The Ilihe subgroup, as earlier stated, were the closest Yoruba neighbors of the Itsakiri kingdom. A few Ijo settlements straggled between the two. The small Ilihe settlements spread out westwards from there all along the coast, in the lagoons and creeks and numberless islets until the boundary with the coastal Ijabu. Not much is known about the pre-19th century history of the Ilihe. The nature of their country made large centers of population impossible. But it does not seem to have made the concept of kingdom, of a group of settlements owing allegiance to a king, impossible. During the centuries marked by the creation of kingdoms in Yoruba land, the coastal spread of Ilihe settlements appears to have gradually come to recognize two kingdoms an eastern kingdom with its royal center at the small old settlement of Ugbo ruled by the Alugbo, and a western kingdom with its royal center at another small settlement called Mohin ruled by the Amapechu. Roughly, the eastern Ilihe villages accepted the Alugbo as their king, and the western Ilihe villages acknowledged the Amapechu as their king. The details of the process that resulted in the emergence of these two kingdoms are obscure. Like all the other peoples living in the lagoons, the Ilihe were principally a fishing people living in small, mostly remote, settlements. Their traditions, and even surviving practices, indicate that these settlements were shrouded in spiritual rituals based on the worship of various traditional Yoruba gods and water spirits. These deities and spirits mediated disputes on conflicting claims over fishing rights and enforced high standards of probity. Common shrines arose in a number of places, each exercising ritual influence over many settlements and stretches of water. Of such common shrines, the most influential seems to have been the shrine of the Ayalala goddess, situated on a stretch of the Alu River which the Ilahe and their hinterland neighbors, the Ikale, regarded as boundary. Ayalala was widely feared among the Ilahe, Ikale and Ijo because of her well-known devastating severity in the punishment of dishonesty. The traditions have it that the Ayalala Shrine was instituted for the resolution of disputes, especially disputes over trade. Apart from fishing, then, trade seems to have very early developed as a major factor in the economic life of people in the Ilahe Creeks and Lagoons trade eastwards to the Itsakiri and Ijo Lagoons and the Benin Coast, and westwards to the Ijebu Coastal Villages, to the Awari Islands and to the Asia Coast, and trade northwards with the hinterland through the Ikale country as well as through villages of the Ijo, the Ijo Aragbo. More will be said about this trade later. Suffice it to suggest here that the need for order and contacts over fishing rights and over trade transactions, apart from instituting powerful shrines, most probably also resulted in wider political arrangements beyond the little settlements ultimately leading to the emergence of two kingdoms. There are faint suggestions in the Ilahe traditions that, of the Ugbo and Mohin kingdoms, Ugbo was the older. Because of the nature of the Ilahe country, the kingdoms represented no more than loose relationships, which operated mostly in situations of inter-village disputes. For the most part, each settlement or village went its own way. The powers of the Alugbo and the Amapechu seem to have consisted mostly of potent ritual sanctions, although either king could occasionally cause boats of different villages to be pooled for intervention in serious disputes. The immediate neighbors of the Ilahe towards the hinterland were the Ikale. The Ikale territory is a slice of territory stretching out roughly parallel to the Ilahe territory and the coastal line. Some Ikale settlements hug the lagoons, but the majority occupied openings in the thick forests close to the coast. The Ikale country was not only thick forest, 
It was also divided up by various bodies of water the northernmost reaches of some lagoons and the southernmost reaches of rivers and streams flowing from the interior. These conditions would seem to have been responsible for the fact that no kingdom of any considerable size arose among the Ikale. Most Ikale towns seem to have started off as small camps in the forest. Typically Yoruba kingdoms ruled by crowned kings emerged, but each remained limited to just one town or not much more than that. Traditions of founders from other places in Yoruba land are common, but Benin input seems also to have been considerable in the early history of the kingdoms in these forests. It is difficult to determine how much of the Benin input went into the actual founding of any of these small kingdoms and how much went into subsequent developments in their history, but Benin influence is obvious in their political titles and in the structures of their monarchical systems. For almost all of these kingdoms, the most probable explanation seems to be that they were already in existence before a strong flow of Edo influence washed over them, especially in the centuries of Benin's commercial expansion. The most notable of the Ikale kingdoms were Ikoi ruled by the Abodi, Odairal under the Alifan, Osoro under the Ribuja, Idip under the Jgun, Odai under the Lapoki, Odairinj under the Orungburuwa, Ajagba under the Ahaba. Some Ikale traditions seem to suggest that the Abodi's kingdom of Ikoya was the first kingdom to emerge in the Ikale country. The Ondo subgroup lived in the expansive forest country north of the Ikale and south of the Ife. Some of the biggest rivers in Yoruba land flow through this very thickly forested country. In addition, in the eastern part of the Ondo country, the Orosan Hill, including the Idana Rock, rises abruptly, forming the highest peak in Yoruba land at 3,098 feet above sea level. Probably because of these conditions, human settlements seem to have been few and widely dispersed in the Ondo forests, and the Ondo dialect showed marked differences from one population center to another. The dialect of the groups settled on the slopes of the Orosan evinced the most obvious differences from the rest, probably because of their considerable isolation. Only three kingdoms seem to have been founded in the Ondo forest Sepe, Ondo, with its capital city at Odondo, and Idunra. Of these, the Ondo kingdom was the most successful from the beginning. An Edo tradition recorded by Jacob Egeref has it that this kingdom was founded by immigrants from Benin during the reign of the Benin king, Ozaluwa. And Benin influence is evident in various aspects of the political culture of the Ondo kingdom the insignia of office, the pattern of the hierarchy of chiefs and the functions of some principal chiefs. However, here again, the true picture seems to be that this kingdom was already in existence before it came under strong Benin influence. The core of Ondo's rather unique monarchical system its special place for high-ranking women chiefs bears much closer harmony with Ondo's own tradition of its origin. According to the Ondo palace traditions, a royal wife in Adujua's palace in Ife had twins, one female and one male. Since having twins was regarded with horror or fear in those early days among the Yoruba, the woman was driven from the town with her twin babies. Accompanied by her relatives and sympathizers, she headed south into the forests until she came to Ape where there were some settlers in the Ondo forests. There the twins grew up, and the male twin established a kingdom. The female twin, Pupupu, later left Ape with her son, Aero, and found her way to the place where she too started a kingdom, naming it Ondo. When Pupupu and Aero and their followers came to this place, there were many old settlements there. By employing tact and the power of rituals, Pupupu and Aero won the acceptance of the rulers of these small old settlements, and so founded their royal city of Odondo. After Pupupu, Aero ruled the new kingdom and established the line of kings with the title of Osemo. A slightly different version of this tradition was recorded by Samuel Johnson, most probably in Oyo, in the late 19th century. According to this version, the woman who had the twins and was driven south into the Ondo forests, was a wife of a king of Oyo, the Alafa Najaka. This would mean that the founders of the Ondo royal family were migrants from Oyo and not Ife, it would also put the founding of the Ondo kingdom in a later time than the other version of the tradition does. Yoruba traditions in general speak of the Ondo kingdom as one of the oldest Yoruba kingdoms considerably older than Oyo Ila and the fact that the Ondo kingdom has one of the longest lists of kings, nearly 50, seems to support this. What the Oyo tradition recorded by Samuel Johnson probably implies is that some close relationship developed between the Ondo and Oyo Ila kingdoms at the early stages of the growth of Oyo's commercial and territorial expansion. As will be seen subsequently, the Ondo kingdom became an important center of trade on an early route which developed north-south through Oyo Ila, Ife, Ondo, to the Ilahe coast. Some rivalry with Ife in the trade of the Ondo area might have given rise to Oyo traditions intended to claim a special closeness of Oyo rulers to the rulers of the Ondo kingdom. According to the traditions of the kingdom of Idenra, its founders were immigrants from Ife. This kingdom was much isolated in early times, 
which is why the influences of the pre Adudua settlers in the area seem to pervade the religion, rituals and political culture of the kingdom. At some point in its history, this kingdom had its political and main ritual centers established, not merely on the slope but right on top of a major peak, accessible only through a hard climb by row platters up bare rock surfaces. The country of the Ijebu subgroup lay west of the Ilhe, Ikali and Ondo territories, southwest of the Ife and south of the Ou and Digba territories. For reasons not well known to us today, the Ijebu country seems to have been very well populated in ancient times, with groups of settlements in many locations. Robert Smith suggests that the reason was the fertility of the soil in the Ijebu forests, and the variety of economic opportunities in farming and fishing along the coast. To these we probably should add the considerable opportunities in trade through these forests. As pointed out in an earlier chapter, trade through the Ijebu country probably accounted for most of the commercial traffic in southern Yoruba land in early times traffic north-south connecting with Ife and beyond, and traffic east-west along and close to the coast. In spite of the general thickness of the Ijebu forests, therefore, the population volume and the amount of economic contacts seem to have resulted in the Ijebu dialect becoming quite homogenous. Probably for the reasons stated above, the Ijebu forests attracted many migrant groups coming to establish kingdoms. And many kingdoms were therefore established there namely Ijebu under the Awujale, Ofen under the Akarigbo, Makan under the Awuzi, Ape under the Elop, Idowa under the Dagbiru, Ikiya under the Akiya. Agoiwoi under the Ibumau, Ijebu Igbo under the Arimalush, Ijebu Ife under the Ajala Run, etc. Of all these kingdoms, that of Ijebu Od was the most successful and famous from the beginning. The traditions of this kingdom speak, as earlier pointed out, of many groups early settled in the location that was later to become Ijebu Od. In fact, it would seem that before the immigrations which created the Ijebu Od kingdom, the early settlers there had evolved some fairly high level of political organization resulting in the emergence of a sort of state, which we must call an Idoko kingdom. Details about this early Idoko kingdom are obscure, but it seems to have been a kingdom with some considerable strength, with some influence over some of the settlements in the locality. Some traditions have it that the Idoko kingdom was the builder of the first town wall in this place a wall that was later to be the eastern sector of the great city wall of Ijebuod. We do not know the circumstances or the processes of the emergence of the Idoko kingdom. But it is known that the area where Ijebuod was later to rise up was a significant junction of trade routes from very early times. It is possible that such commercial opportunities and the wealth from them enabled one of the old settlements here to acquire political influence over some of the others. Upon this scene, according to the traditions of the founding of the Ijebuod kingdom, three different kingdom founding migrations came. The first migration was led by Ali Iwahu, with his followers, settled at Iwod, now an important part of the city of Ijebuod. A second migration was led by Arasu, who settled in the Iyase area of the city. The third and most important migration was led by Ogborogan who is said to have come from Ife. After leaving Ife, the traditions say, Ogborogan went on a long, circuitous and adventurous journey through Emisi, in Ijesa, and through the Ondo forests before he entered the Ijebu country. All along this long route, he added more and more people to his following. By the time he arrived at Ijebu Ode, he had become so famous that the people were excited to receive him. With shouts of Obawanita, the king is in our streets, the inhabitants welcomed him as their king. From this manner of his reception, he is said to have acquired the new name Abana. The title Awujale, the title of Ijebu Od kings, was created in his time. Some traditions attempt to explain this royal title, Awujale. One has it that on his long journey to Ijebu Od, Ogborogan defeated the ruler of Igbo in a wrestling contest and that from this event the title of Awujale arose, meaning, one who knows how to fight on land. Samuel Johnson, on the other hand, has given us an Oyo tradition which claims that one king of Oyoil, the Alafan Jain, sent an Alari or palace messenger to southwest Yoruba land to adjudicate in a land dispute, and this messenger became the king of Ijebu hence Awujale, one who resolved the land dispute. It is unlikely that we have in these traditions the true meaning of the title Awujale. Most Yoruba royal and chiefly titles derived from the Yoruba language, and its dialects, of an early age, and most sound-based decipherings of them in our times are, at best, suspect. As in the case of the Ondo Kingdom, the tradition we have here probably represents an Oyo attempt to promote the picture of a special link between the rulers of Oyo Il and the rulers of Ijebu Od, the most important trading center in Yoruba land south of Ife. The country of the Awari lay along and close to the coast with an eastern boundary with the coastal Ijebu and a western boundary with the coastal non-Yoruba Asia people, of the modern Benin Republic. To the north of the Awari were the countries of the Igbado. 
Most of the Awari lived on the group of small islands in the area of Echo, now Lagos, Island and the low-lying forests in its immediate hinterland. Three kingdoms sprang up in the Awari country, Echo on a coastal island, Ada in the hinterland forests, and Badagri on the extreme western end of the Awari coast. Many small Awari settlements existed before the emergence of these kingdoms. According to Awari and other Yoruba traditions, Ada seems to have been the earliest kingdom created among the Awari. The traditions of Ada have it that the founder of this kingdom, an immigrant prince from Ife, came among Awari settlers in this place and consolidated them into his kingdom, the Ada kingdom ruled by the Oloda. Some other Yoruba have it that Ada was one of the oldest Yoruba kingdoms. According to the traditions of the Echo Kingdom, its people first settled at a place called Izuri, a small settlement of mostly hunters and fishermen on the lower bank of the Ogun River, some distance southeast of Ada and a few miles inland from the coast. To this place, a prince named Ogun Funmanire came from Ife and was accepted as king. Trade was beginning to grow in the coastal lagoons, trade eastwards with the coastal Ijebu and from there with the Ilohe, Ijo, Itsakiri and the Benin, and westwards with the villages of the Asia coast. In order to be able to catch more of this trade, most of the Azuri people, led by their king, undertook a series of relocations that brought them closer to the lagoons, leaving at Azuri a small remnant that has kept that little village alive till our times. The main body first relocated to Abute Meta, then to the edge of the lagoon at Ito, and finally to the biggest island in the area, Echo Island. Here, incorporating into their community the scattering of other Awari settlers already living on the island, they established the permanent home of their kingdom the Echo Kingdom under their king who bore the title of Olofin. The kingdom of Badagri came into existence on the Awari coast many centuries later than the kingdoms of Ada and Echo, in an area in which Awari and Western Asia settlers, known as Gun or Agun, lived close together. In the 1730s, some Dutch traders established a trading post on the lagoon at this place, and it quickly attracted settlers from among the Awari, Agun and other Asia elements. The Asia became the predominant group in Badagri at the outset and therefore its earliest leadership was almost entirely of Asia origin. The form of a kingdom quickly evolved, somewhat different from the typical Yoruba kingdom in the sense that its king, the Akron, had very little control over the various sections of the town beyond his own section. The origin of the Akron title holders is traced to the Asia kingdom of Miwi. Because of the strong Asia presence and influence in the origins of this kingdom, some students of Yoruba history wonder whether we are right in identifying it as a Yoruba kingdom. The area, however, was a Wari territory with many small Awari settlements inhabiting the sandy swamps around it, and many of such Awari ultimately became part of the new town and kingdom of Badagri. Also, Badagri almost immediately came under the influence of the Oyo Empire and, as a result, the number and influence of Yoruba elements grew in it. The Western Kingdoms The Igba kingdoms are concentrated today in the city of Abeokuta and control the forests around it, especially on both sides of the river Ogun but until the early 19th century their country extended much further to the west and included the site of the modern city of Ibadan. This original Igba territory shared a boundary with the Ou to the east, with the Ijebu and Awari to the south, with the Ibarapa and Oyo to the north and with the Igbado to the west. The Igba, as earlier pointed out, comprised three branches or provinces. Of these, the largest were the Igba Agora, or Gabagura, occupying the northern parts of the Igba forests. The second were the Igba Okana so-called because their territory was on the banks of the Ona River, close to the Ramo province of Ijabu. And the third branch was the Igba Agbayan who occupied the western parts of the Igba forests. According to Igba traditions, many immigrant groups, each out to create a kingdom, came into the Igba forests during the 14th and 15th centuries. Some came from Ife, and some from other parts of Yoruba land, especially from northwestern Yoruba land, that is, the Oyo country. Many of the towns that thus emerged in the Igba forest trace the ancestry of their rulers to Ife or Oyo. Only five towns, however, became known as kingdoms, ruled by kings wearing the beaded crowns of Yoruba monarchs. Of these five, there were two among the Gabagura, Ito, under the Agura, and Alugun, under the Anagun, one among the Igba Okana, Oko, ruled by the Oliko or Asile, and two among the Igba Agbayan, Kesi, ruled by the Ojoko, and Ake, ruled by the Alake. The country of the Iberopa lay roughly north of the Igba country, southwest of the Oyo country, and east of Igbado. Between the Iberopa and their Igba neighbors, very close relationships developed. Similar to the Igba country, a number of kingdoms were founded in the Iberopa country, some of them by immigrant rulers whose origins are traced to Ife and other places in central Yoruba land. From the late 16th century, 
the Ibarapa country came under very intense Oyo influence as a result of the expansion of Oyo influence in the era of the Oyo Empire. As a result, the population of some of the Ibarapa towns came to have a strong Oyo component. Today, the leading kingdom of the Ibarapa country is Irua. Immediately north of the Awari country, and west of the Igba, Ibarapa, and Oyo, was the country of the Igbado, west of the Ogun River. The Igbado had the Asia to their west and southwest. One important peculiarity of the Igbado country was that the Igbado people lived in considerable intermixture with communities of other Yoruba subgroups like the Awari from the south and other Yoruba groups from the west, as well as communities of non-Yoruba elements like the Asia from the west. From about the third decade of the 17th century, large numbers of Asia and Yoruba elements fleeing eastwards from pressure by the rising power of Dahomey, and then of Oyo elements attracted southwest towards the trade through the Igbado country came to add to the demographic diversity of the Igbado country. The kingdoms that emerged in the Igbado country, therefore, were of widely diverse origins. According to Igbado traditions, the earliest kingdoms were founded in the 14th and 15th centuries by immigrant princes of Ife origin. Erinja and Alibi are the two most important in this group. Probably not much later than Erinja and Alibi, the two kingdoms of Iloro, under the Olu, and Ajana came into existence. During the two centuries after these, Awari migrants from the south created the kingdoms of Adu and Ataki, and Asia migrants from the southwest created the kingdom of Ipokia. Then during the 17th century, as the power of the Fon kingdom of Dahomey grew and its pressure on the peoples to its south and east increased, mixed crowds of Yoruba and Asia peoples came east into the Igbado country and founded such kingdoms as Iatoro, Igan, and Ig. The subgroups and kingdoms of the far western Yoruba land now live beyond the borders of Nigeria in the modern Republic of Benin and the Republic of Togo. Samuel Johnson counts three kingdoms of this area among, according to him, the oldest seven kingdoms of the Yoruba people, founded by Odujua's grandchildren in Odujua's lifetime. The three are the Keta kingdom ruled by the Alaketu, the Sabe kingdom ruled by the Onizib, and the Popo kingdom ruled by the Ilupapo. Both Ife and Keta traditions agree that the founder of the Keta kingdom was a certain Sopasan, who left Ife in Odujua's time and founded Ketu. There is however, as would be remembered, some question about Sopasan's ancestry one tradition claiming that he was a grandson of Odudua, and another tracing his ancestry to one of the pre-Odudua settlements in Ife. Further details of Sopasan's migration have it that the group led by him split into three after crossing the Ogun River. One group under Sopasan himself and his nephew, O. Oh, continued roughly westwards and ultimately founded Ketu. A second group first headed northwest, but was forced to turn back south and continued until it founded the kingdom of Sabe. The third group headed north up the Ogun River and eventually founded a kingdom identified in this tradition as Oyo, probably an early arrival in the Oyo country before Ornmian. Before finally settling and founding Ketu, the first group led by Sopasan and O stopped and settled in a number of places first at a place called Okian, probably near the future location of Saki and then another location called Aro. Sirpassan died at Aro and O took his place. In the reign of Ede, the seventh ruler of the group, the group moved again. It then again split into three. One party led by a hunter named Idafa founded a town and named it Idafa, after its leader. A second party founded Igbo or in the country of the Ibarapa. And the third party led by Ede himself was guided by a hunter named Alalumo until it eventually settled at Ketu and established the final home of its kingdom. Other migrant groups, some of them from Oyo, later established a number of small kingdoms in the Keta country. Of these, the most important was Ifanyan. The Ifanyan kingdom later became a center from which other kingdoms were founded first Ihumbo and Ikalahe, and later Ils. The above body of traditions, then, gives accounts of the founding of the kingdoms of Ketu and Sabe in the far west. The same traditions, as well as other related traditions, supply more details about the process of the founding of Sabe. According to them, after the Sabe migration separated from the main group led by Sopasan, it moved under its leader, Salubi, north into the Bariba, Borgu, country and founded the town of Paraku. Salubi died at Paraku. His second successor, Iogun, later moved the group to Kilabo where they remained for a long time under as many as nine reigns. This place would have become their final home, but serious pressure from the Bariba forced them to give it up and to head back southwards until they came into the country of the Sabe subgroup. Here, they found a number of small old settlements that they had to suppress before they could establish their kingdom. About the Popo Kingdom, we do not have today traditions as detailed as the above other than that its founder was a prince of Ife and that it was one of the earliest kingdoms founded from Ife. As pointed out in an earlier chapter, 
Although Yoruba traditions are emphatic about a Popo Yoruba subgroup and kingdom, neither has been identified anywhere. One possible answer to the puzzle was earlier suggested, namely that both the Popo subgroup and kingdom were probably absorbed into the cultures of their Asian and Yu neighbors, leaving feigned survivals of their name in various places in these western counties. But another answer is also possible, and seems to be favored by some historians. According to this, Popo was probably not the name of any definite group but the name by which the Yoruba referred loosely and generally to the countries of the distant west a name which acquired strong currency in the era of the expansion of the Oyo Empire in the 17th and 18th centuries. In the light of the widespread presence of Popo in Yoruba traditions and folklore, however, the former possibility would seem to be considerably stronger than the latter. At various times, some other kingdoms were founded in these far western frontiers of Yoruba land, also by persons from Ife or other places in the Yoruba heartlands. Among these were the kingdoms of Ifeta, Igeta, Iloji, and some kingdoms among the subgroups called the Shah and the Ife, some of whom are now in the Republic of Togo. Some traditions trace the origins of the Shah kingdoms to the Ijesa country in east central Yoruba land and of the Ife to the Ife kingdom in central Yoruba land. Probably centuries after the founding of the old kingdoms of Ketu and Sabe, two other kingdoms were founded in the general area not far from Ketu. One was the kingdom of Idasa, and the other the kingdom of Ohori Ej. The latter was founded in the land of the Ahori subgroup to the south of Ketu. The traditions of Idasa have it that the Idasa kingdom was founded by a man named Jagan Olofin who came from the Igba country. The Extreme Northeastern Subgroups In the extreme northeastern region of Yoruba land, close to the niger benue confluence, the area believed to have been the earliest home of the Yoruba as a people, there live today many small subgroups of the Yoruba, Dio, Ikiri, Abunu, Ooro, Yagba, Gbid, and Jamu. These Okan Yoruba had the Akiti and Akoko as their neighbors to the south, and Igbamana as their neighbors to the west, and non Yoruba peoples, the Nup and the Kakanda, as their neighbors to the north and east. Their territory is the area where Yoruba people closely touch and interact with other peoples of the Niger Benue confluence, namely the Nup, Ebira, Kakanda, and Igala. For reasons not known to us today, this region of Yoruba land did not experience the centuries long revolution that resulted in the creation of the Yoruba kingdoms. As a result, the subgroups in the region have no traditions of kingdom founding migrant personages and groups from Ife or elsewhere in Yoruba land, no centralized Yoruba kingdoms, and no typical Yoruba monarchical institutions and paraphernalia. Instead of typical, centralized, Yoruba kingdoms, what have evolved among them are decentralized state formations examples of which are found in Ife Lukotan among the Yagba and Yufjamu among the Jamu. In Ife Lukotan, for instance, a sort of supreme ruler with the title of Ajala Run, later Alukotan, emerged, but this did not involve the abolition of the original leadership titles or the creation of central institutions. The original rulers, with the titles of Oluoroba, continued to preside over their own hierarchies of chiefs and over their own little states, each of which was a combination of some lineages, with its own cycle of rituals, its own set of prohibitions and taboos, its own area of land. All these, plus the differences between their pantheon of deities and the typical Yoruba gods, strongly indicate that the Yoruba subgroups in this region are directly descended from groups largely unaffected by the major kingdom founding developments that transformed the rest of Yoruba land. The Northern Kingdoms To the west of this land of the Okan Yoruba lay the country of the Yoruba subgroup known as the Igbamana, or Igbuna. The Igbamana country has the Oyo country to its west, the Ibolo country to its southwest, the Nup to its north, and the Akiti and Ajesa to its south. The Igbamana seem to have had especially close relationships with their Akiti neighbors in history, and the two are very similar in many respects. As in the Akiti country, many kingdoms were founded among the Igbamana, notable among which were Ila, Ajis, Izanlu, Omu, Aran, Oro, Igbaja, Iwo, Izi, Ekuapa, Ora, Oba, Idafian and Oroago. Of these, the kingdom of Ila enjoys an elevated status in Yoruba traditions on account of the fact that the ancestry of its ruler, the Orangun, is traced to a line very close to Odudua. The founder of the Orangun dynasty is said to be one of Odudua's daughters named Adetanrin. Guided by the Ifa oracle, Adetanrin set out from Ife, intent on founding a kingdom. Moving with her followers in a northeastern direction, Adetanrin entered into the Igbamana country and settled at a place called Igbo Ajagunla, named after her son Ajagunla. Adetanrin died at this place and was succeeded as the ruler by Ajagunla with the title of Orangun. Here, the group came under some hostile attacks, and therefore in the reign of Amoda, one of Ajagunla's successors, they decided to relocate to a new place which they called Ilayara. At Ilayara, 
the group prospered considerably for a long time, the best remembered kings of the period being the Orangunagboy and the Orangunaboyan. But Iliar later came under attacks also. One Orangun named Aruta died fighting and was deified by his subjects. The group again decided to move, but then it split into two when a prince named Apakama led a splinter group to found another town. The splinter group first called its new town Ila Okiri, but later changed its name to Okila. Each of the two sister towns called its ruler the Orangun, but there was never any question in Okila about the paramountcy of the Orangun of Ila in the Ila family. The other Igbomina kingdoms were founded in the Igbomina country after Ila, mostly by persons tracing their origins to Ife. A few, however, trace the origin of their founders to Oyo. Of these the most notable were Ajis Ipo, believed to have been founded by a daughter of an Alafin, Iwo, ruled by the Oniwo, Iris, ruled by the Elisa Vigbaja, and Aura, ruled by the Olora. The exalted ancestry of the Orangun made the Ila kingdom the most senior Igbomina kingdom from these beginnings. The country of the Ibolo, sandwiched between the Igbomina and Oyo countries, is small. The Ibolo and their much larger Igbomina neighbors were so closely related in their history that some Igbomina traditions regard the Ibolo as a branch of Igbomina. A number of kingdoms were founded in the Ibolo country Afa, Ikaran, Okaku and others. Of these, the most prominent in history was Afa. Afa traditions trace the origin of the founder of the kingdom to the Oyo country. The Afa kingdom takes great pride in its peacock, or Oken, symbol, for which reason Afa people are known as Omoalakan, and the Afa people are reputed among all Yoruba people for their passion for wrestling hence the saying, Ijikati Loro Afa, wrestling is Afa's favorite festival. According to Okako traditions, the founder of the Okaku kingdom was a prince of the Yara kingdom in Akiti who emigrated in protest after he was passed over in a selection to the Yara throne. All of the vast territory of the rest of northern Yoruba land, extending all the way to the country of the Keta to the west, was the home of the Oyo subgroup. Their northwestern neighbors were the non Yoruba Bariba of Borgu, and their northeastern neighbors the Noob, both peoples of the Niger Valley. To the south, the Oyo country straddled the countries of the Ijesa, Ife, Ou, and Igba. Many kingdoms were founded in this broad, mostly grassland, country, only a few of which are clearly remembered in the traditions Oyo Ila, Ogboro, Adikun, Eresa, Igben, Ijeru, Igana, Iwere, Asia, Oko, Igaijan, Saki, Igboho, Ibode, Ipapo, Kisi, Isain, Ilabu, Ifoutan, Iwo, Ides, Ed, Ogbomoso. A few of these kingdoms were founded in the Oyo country before Oyo Ila. Most were younger than Oyo Ila. Most have it in their traditions that their founders originated from Ife. A few, like Ed, were founded somewhat later in history by persons from Oyo Ila. Of all the kingdoms of the Oyo country, Oyo Ila became the richest, most powerful, and greatest. According to Oyo, Ife and general Yoruba traditions, Oyo Ila was founded by Oranmian, one of Odujua's youngest grandsons. A man of great bravery, Oranmian set out from Ila Ife as a youth, leading a large group of brave youths like himself. The traditions of the Edo, the southeastern neighbors of the Yoruba, give an account of his first exploits after leaving home. According to these Edo traditions, the Edo people in Oranmian's time were ruled by some ancient rulers known as the Ogizo under whom the Edo country plunged into profound disorder. Some of the Edo leaders therefore sent a message to the ruler, the Olofin, of Ife, identified in their traditions as Odudua himself, although more likely to be one of Odudua's successors, urging him to send help for the reorganization of their country. The king of Ife responded by sending Ornmian. On arrival, Ornmian was welcomed by some of the Edo leaders but resisted by others. He suppressed the resistance and then settled down in established order and a strong monarchy. After some years, he decided to leave, saying that the kingdom, known as Benin, really ought to be ruled by an indigenous Edo prince. He then installed as king his son, Uur, born to him by one of his Edo wives. The young king Uur became the progenitor of the dynasty that led and developed the Benin kingdom and made it the most powerful kingdom on the shores of West Africa. Yoruba traditions confirm these Edo traditions and add that not long after returning to Ife as a great hero, Ornmian set out again this time northwards into the Oyo country, desirous to found a kingdom of his own, as many of his cousins had done. He traversed the whole breadth of the Oyo country before he found a suitable place to settle in the northwestern borderlands of the Oyo country, just south of the Niger Valley, an area where small Oyo settlements existed interspersed with a scatter of small Bariba and Noop settlements. Unifying together some of the settlements in the area, he established his kingdom, the Kingdom of Oyo Ila. The title, Alafin, probably arose early as the title of the rulers of this kingdom. Some years later, 
Oranmi and returned to Ila Ife, leaving his sons in charge of Oyo Ila.